Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you all. Welcome to Red Cross Tabernacle of Praise Sunday School. And I am your facilitator and teacher on this morning, uh, Vernon Marsh. It's good to have you guys on on today. Come on and join in. Come on and join in. We should be live on all platforms at this time. So I want to take this time out to say thank you for joining us uh, to our broadcast on today, our Sunday school broadcast, Sunday school, amen, praise God. This is the time that we, uh, we grow and get stronger in the Lord through Sunday school as we matured as a child through Sunday school. It is good to have all of the Red Cross Tabernacle Praise Church family joining us on this morning. Amen. And I say thank you, thank you, thank you for waking up, starting your day on as we prepare to, amen, uh, for worship service, for communion on today. So again, I say thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we're going to get ready and get started. Um, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give you worship. We give you honor. We say thank you for waking us up on this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for the activity of our limbs. God, thank you for the food that is, will be upon our tables on today. Thank you, O oh God, for our livelihood, that you have blessed us tremendously. God, we thank you that we are the head and not the tail, and we lack nothing in you, Christ Jesus. We ask, Father God, that you continue to bless us throughout this morning, throughout the remaining of the day, that our eyes will stay focused upon you. Our hearts will yearn for more of you. And Lord, as we prepare to break bread together with our brothers and sisters on today, both in the natural and the spiritual, Lord, we're praying for a Holy Ghost move. God, we stand in the need of miracles. We stand in need of deliverance, Lord. In the name of Jesus, many, O oh God, are physically going through both mentally and spiritually, Lord. And Lord, we need a divine touch from you, Father, like only you can, Father. And so, Lord, we pray, O oh God, and we charge the atmosphere for the Holy Ghost to take control and have its way on today. Bless us even in the midst of the Sunday school uh, in this format, in the fashion. But, O oh God, when we come together and we're able to look into the white of the eyes of my brothers and my sisters, that, Lord, that you will cause a stirring in our soul, that you will begin to cause the very place in which we stand to be, O oh God, uh, uh, infused with your presence. That, Lord, that you, O oh God, will cause, O oh God, the, the spirit of the living God to begin to search out throughout, O oh God, healing, touching, O oh God, and delivering many. So, Lord, we thank you on this morning. We give you worship and we give you praise. In Jesus' glorious name, amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for a man uh, bowing and praying with me on this morning. Uh, praise God. We're, we're putting a mandate on the spirit on today. Putting a mandate on the spirit. We thank God, amen, how he has moved uh, in the lives of so many. But we're still standing in the need of miracles. We're still standing in the need of prayer. Amen. And so, amen, we're going to, amen, divulge uh, and uh, jump into Amen. Do, do those from that jump on into the lesson on this morning. And our Sunday school lesson is number lesson number five. This is July the 3rd, 2022. And our scripture reading is coming from the book of Haggai 1, 1 through 11. The title of our Sunday school lesson on this morning is Haggai calls for faithful service. Haggai calls for faithful service. The golden text that is underlining the entire lesson is coming from the book of Haggai, verse chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time of, for you, O ye, to dwell in your, in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Okay, Haggai calls for faithful service. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? This is a good lesson, a good lesson. 
Let us jump on into the actual reading. Again, I'm coming from Haggai, uh, first chapter, verses 1 through 11. If someone could chat and put that into the text, uh, the actual title, Haggai's Call for Faithful Service, and Haggai, the scripture Haggai, first chapter 1 and 11, just so that others who may jump on may, amen, uh, see where we are uh, uh, basing the lesson from and, and everything of that nature. Stand by. Chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, Give me one second. I got to drop that down. Good morning, amen. Red Cross Tabernacle Praise Church family, Sister Mears, Minister Sproul, amen. Pastor Stephanie and Sister Hafiz, good morning, good morning. Amen. Praise God. Okay, the scripture reading is this. Verse 1 says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, uh, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheetiel, governor of Judah, Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jodesh, uh, Josedesh, and uh, Josedesh, the high priest, saying, Thus speak the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come the time that the Lord house shall be built then the word of the word then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying is it time for you O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste now therefore thus says the Lord of hosts consider your ways ye have sown much and bring bring in little ye eat but ye have not enough ye drink but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is done warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into the bag, into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and I will take pleasure in, in it. And I will glorif be glorified, said the Lord. Ye look for much and lo, it came to little, and when ye profit it home, it did blow upon it. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over, over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Haggai calls for faithful service. Oh my God, this is deep. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you to say alleluia in advance, uh, because this is gonna step on some toes. Uh, this amen may will amen pierce the heart, amen, because we're going to do a self evaluation, a checkup from the neck up, amen. Praise God, and we're going to see where this, this lesson goes. Are you ready? Let's journey into the word, amen, on today, amen. And uh, let's see what God will speak and say concerning the lesson as we are going through the lesson through the book. But we always leave, amen, the Holy Spirit open to have its way. Amen. In the introduction, it says that Chuck Swindle relates C.S. Lewis in the uh, in the uh, screw tape letter says that one day Satan and his imps were planning their strategy. One demon said, I've got a plan, master. I'll tell them there there's no heaven. And I'll tell them that there's no heaven. The devil responds, ah, they'll never believe that. This book of truth is full of messages about the hope of heaven through sins forgiven. They won't believe that. They know there's a, a glory yet future. On the other side of the room, another says, I got the plan. I'll tell them there's no hell. No good, he says. Jesus, while he was on earth, talked more of hell than heaven. And one, and one brilliant little imp in the back stood up and said, then I know, I know the answer. 
I'll just tell them there's no hurry. And he says, the one Satan chooses. And he says, the one Satan chooses, the tale of the tardy ox cart word. So the devil came up with a plan with imps and said, I'll just tell them there's no hurry. In other words, I keep pushing it off, make them feel like they got time. But the Bible says the time is not promised to no man. Okay? Time is not promised to no man. So we need to work while it's day. For when night come, no man can work. Okay? That's what the word of God says. And so when we look here in the, uh, the lesson on today, the people um, attitude was that they were all about themselves. Their attitude was for the simple fact that uh, they have allowed the house of God to go lacking. There was nothing, amen, praise God, in their hearts to do but self-pleasure, uh, to go when they wanted to go and do what they wanted to do. They did not want to obey God and his warnings. And so God said, it's just like putting your, your monies into a hole and they're just falling through. Okay, we build ourselves up on nothing less but Jesus Christ and his righteousness, okay? And so in the midst of that, we must keep in mind that in the midst of all that we do, we must serve God continuously. Serving God is not a nine to five. Serving God is not a man, just a weekend expression as if we were in the, the reserves of, of North Carolina. In the Army Reserves of North Carolina, this is just not a man, a, 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 a weekend re, re, uh, training event that most of us get ready for on, on on Sunday at midnight for the training for worship just for uh, two, maybe an hour and a half. This is not a man, a, a time where we can call in and say, Lord, I just not, I just don't feel like coming. I'm not going to come. No, this is a 24-7, 365 or sometime 366 uh, 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 worship experience. Even when we lay our head down upon the cool, a man felt pillow at night, a man, we are still in service unto the Lord. This is no, I, this is not, I don't call this an occupation. Even as a pastor, this is not my job. This is my service. This is my commitment. This is my worship unto the Lord that he has called me as a pastor that I may serve his people. I am a servant of the most high God. And see, when we begin to look at church like as if it's business to the degree that we we're punching in to say, lift up our hands and say hallelujah. And then after that, we clock out and we go home and we're back to our old self. No, worship is a 24-7 uh, 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 mindset. Worship is a 24-7 attitude. Worship is a amen for all of your life, every breathing moment. Notice I said breathing moment. Every time you that you take a breath, it's an act of worship. And we ought to be telling God, thank you. Hallelujah. In the car, a man going to Walmart, going to Food Line, going to Harris Teeter. Amen. We ought to be telling the Lord, thank you. Looking for divine opportunities to impart the gospel of Jesus Christ unto someone who, amen, do not know him. Looking for an opportunity to serve, amen, and show the hands and feet of Christ in and throughout our community, our neighborhood. Someone is always in need. And it takes us, it takes you and I to get off of our behinds of do nothing and give God glory in every aspect of our lives. Yes, I do understand that there's a lot of people and a lot of things going on and, and uh, we're vacationing and we're we're trying to, you know, get it in before we go back to work and we're trying to do, do that. But we can't not forget God. We cannot stop serving God because we're tired, because it, 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 you no, know, this is God. And, 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 and the lesson text, it says, to, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie in waste, the house of God lie in waste, the house of God is in want and in need and we're not sacrificing, amen, our time and our service unto the Lord. Oh, we're going to jump in and see exactly, amen, praise God, uh, what he's getting into, amen. Good morning, amen, uh, 
Minister Diane Sproul, Pastor Stephanie, who else I just saw? saw. Yes, Sister Melissa, God bless you all on this morning. God bless you, Evangelist Marsh, Elder Marsh. They are on the speakerphone uh, worshiping with us as well, and uh, others are watching and listening here in my home. Uh, so we're going to continue on. Haggai calls for faithful service, faithful service, the prophet of the Lord. And so when we begin to look at this, as we discussed in last week, Judah had begin, been taken captive by Babylon, which was the last of the three departions, deportions, uh, deportations, amen. Eventually there were three returns with the first being led by Zerubbabel, accompanied by the priest Joshua. For these two leaders, the first priority was the reestablishment of the worship of Yahweh. Their initial project was, to, was the re rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. When the foundation had been laid, there was a mixture of emotions and with great joy in some and sadness in others. It was only a short time until the op uh, opposition from local uh, um, enemies, from the local enemies began, eventually following correspondence between these adversaries and King Xerxes. The construction work on the temple ceased. It was not until the coming forth of the prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, some 16 years later, that the work began once again and the temple was completed. And so when we begin to look at this, we see that it wasn't until the prophet, amen, the prophets came upon the scene that God could entrust the hands of the people to continue to build because he now have, uh, uh, he has risen up prophets that's going to speak and give clarity and direction. And so when we look at the question, it says, at what point did Judah's history did Haggai minister? So we see we came, he came on the, in the, um, on the text and in the text, a man here, uh, that it was not until the coming forth of the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, some 16 years later, that the work had begun. So God has raised up, a man, these prophets to come and to speak and to declare, a man, what is what needs to happen. And again, I love to point out the fact that every time that we look through scripture from Old Testament and New Testament, that when prophets stood up and began to declare the word of the Lord, the prophets many times did not have anything good to say. Good, uh, when I say good to say, I'm meaning in a way that it's going to cause one individual to bring have prosperity per se. Okay. Uh, it was more mainly the prophet would speak to the nation. And yes, you had some prophets that would speak directly to the king, uh, as in with, you know, David, uh, praise God, uh, that the prophet revealed, amen, it was you, O, o king, that you messed up and, uh, 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 and you have taken Bathsheba and you have killed off her husband. Uh, yes, God will speak directly, but majority of the times the prophets were speaking to a nation, to get the nation hearts back to God. And so sometimes I try to look and compare in today's society in, in the rulings of prophets in our, uh, in, in our uh, ecclesia, in the church of God. And I see that our prophecy has been declared over the people more on a personal aspect and personal note than that of a, 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 a clarion call for the body of Christ or the nation to uh, align themselves or realign themselves with God. Um, many times you didn't hear prophets in the Old Testament and in the New Testament prophesy of wealth and prophesy of, of this, that, and the other. The main voice that you heard coming through the prophet was that of a relationship malfunction between you as the individual and your worship with God. Many times the prophet was coming to get the people's heart back in a realignment with God. He didn't care whether they had food on the table, clothes on their back, 
uh, whether they were impoverished, uh, whether they were rich or whatever, when the word of the Lord came, it came to uh, uh, quicken the relationship back into uh, 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 the right status between God and his creation. Okay? It was always something spiritual. Always something spiritual that was happening uh, in an individual life or to a man, uh, a, a, a nation or a group of people. It was never a pay me 1995 from Luke 19 and 9 or whatever, and you're going to get this blessing tomorrow morning. It was never about that. Oh, how we have erred in our uh, integrity before the Lord. And so when I begin to look at the uh, the scope of the platform of prophets, I am very um, cautious into who speaks into our lives at Red Cross Tabernacle Praise and then also in my life as well. And Pastor Stephanie is the same. We have to take the scripture and allow the scripture to maintain the weight of, of reasoning. And if it doesn't line up with the word, then, you know, uh, then we must nod our heads and, okay, let God be God and every man a liar. Can I get a witness? Amen. That's right, Pastor Stephanie. Check your test, uh, your thermostat. Check your thermostat. Uh, excellent, amen, teaching on Wednesday night, amen, and it kind of flows with what we're talking about uh, because we see here the, the people of Israel yet again, uh, it says in the house lie waste, meaning the God the God's house lie waste, everybody have sealed themselves into their homes, when I looked at that I thought about how we were in our homes during the pande pan pandemic pretty much sealed up and the houses of worship was 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 on Zoom and Facebook and YouTube and 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 everything was sealed up, but the the Alphabet Store was still open. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, Alphabet Store. Yeah, that liquor store was still open. ABC uh, uh, was still open, never closed down, never lost. Matter of fact, I believe they sales a man skyrocketing because people didn't have nothing to do but go home and drink to a man get past their misery of being home with their children, being home with their spouse, uh, being home and can't go out with the fellas or or the girlfriends or whatever. I think, hey amen, the liquor store sales uh, skyrocketed because they never shut down, at least not around here, not in these parts. And so we see, hey amen, it says, oh, ye to dwell in your sealed houses, in other words, you have contained yourself and sealed yourself off from the work of the Lord and the, the house of God, which I have called you to build and to establish and to secure is lying in waste and you're not going to do anything. You have the job I've blessed you with. You have the food on your table that I've given unto you. You have prospered in the earth and yet you take it unto yourselves and put it into your own pockets and you do nothing for the house of God. How dare you? This is what the prophet is speaking. This is what the prophets were speaking. It lies in waste. And so when we begin to look in this, we see Haggai's challenge had begun with a quotation of an assertion made by those who were living in Jerusalem and doing uh, and not doing anything about the temple. Haggai specifically addressed Zerubbabel, the civil leader, and Joshua, the high priest, pointing out that the people were using excuses the people were using excuses. That sounds very... Huh. Okay. The people were using excuses for not getting back to the building project. Oh, how we use excuses not to do the will and the work of the Lord. We'll sell out mama and daddy uh, uh, if we can just stay off the wall of work. My God, we will use excuses... Amen. Praise God. Uh, 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 like they're going out of style. And we only in church for an hour and 25 minutes at most. We The church get more excuses than, than work does. Yes, we, 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 we make up excuses more uh, than, than the unsaved. And we supposed to be doing this, this, this work with the Lord supposed to be filled with joy. 
<laughs> but we bring God more excuses than a hen in a hand basket. Okay? We got to stop a man uh, excusing ourselves from the work of of the Lord, you know he has called you in the ministry of help. He, you know he has called you to do this, that, and the other. And yet we make excuses when it's time to get back to the building project. Get back to worshiping. Get back to praise and worship. Get back to serving God. They were claiming the time was not yet right for doing so. I have learned over the years that there would never be a perfect time to do anything. There would never be a perfect time to perfectly align yourself, to perfectly bring the equation and solution that God has called you to uh, and, and work it. It'll never be a perfect time. But when you're serving God, amen, every time you're doing work unto the Lord as your hands find fit to do, shall prosper before the Lord. That is always a perfect time because time, God doesn't dwell in time, okay? It is us who dwells in time. God is a, a, a finite being, infinite, okay? God is an infinite being and, and there's no time constraint upon him. Every moment that we put work in for the Lord is a perfect time. Okay. Haggai made it clear that the message from God held a divine rebuke. This is a divine rebuke right here that he's given to the people of God and uh, of his people and show his displeasure, his displeasure. You think God is pleased with me all the time? Pleased with you all the time? No, he's not. Thank God we under the dispensation of grace and mercy that his long suffering, amen, is, 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 is toward us. Amen, praise God is awesome that he don't take you and I out when we fail to meet the requirement, fail, amen, to come before him and worship, fail at, at what he called us to do, amen, and we come back in the house of God and we're ready to take the bread of life and the fruit of the of the vine and, and, and we'll take and say we're doing this in remembrance of him and we go on, but we have missed the mark somewhere along our journey in serving him wholeheartedly. Yes, he find displeasure, amen, in us. The thing, amen, that we must do, amen, as saints of God is to ensure that, amen, that uh, we find pleasure in him and joy in him and serving so it won't feel like it's a hard thing. And me as a pastor, I'll never, amen, compromise, amen, your integrity with God to cause you to do something, amen, that would not bring glory unto the Lord. I'm not a hard taskmaster as a, amen, a servant leader. I am not a hard taskmaster as a shepherd that God has called me to amen and and, and 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 the thing is we still find excuses I think I'm on my soapbox for a moment I think it needs to be said it need to be heard amen praise God that we amen need to fill the sanctuary but where is the laborers the laborers are few the vineyards are, are ripe and plenteous but the laborers are few Lord send in my laborers I need the laborers in the house of worship I need some willing workers to sacrifice here amen and, and, and go forth and compel men to come to Christ amen praise God we need to feel the same I was in the church amen just recently on last week preparing a man for some other things and I was able to pull down more chairs and get more chairs into the sanctuary I did a count a man praise God and saw a man how many the sanctuary truly holds and I said we should have we should be at 75 percent capacity every Sunday but God, I need willing workers. I need some laborers to go into the vineyard. I need to add some into the vineyard. I need some willing laborers to go, amen, and pull in the lost. 
amen, the unchurched, the hurting, the wayward, amen, the whoremonger, amen, the drunkard. I need, amen, someone to be on fire for God, to go forth and compel men to come to Christ and that RCTP church, which is good, solid ground, fruitful and fertile ground that they could come and be planted in to cause the ministry to expand, to cause your faith to expand, to cause your heart to bubble over in the agape love, loving them, amen, as they come in, amen, praise God and causing them to, amen, want to love more of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, the Lord, this was a divine rebuke, a divine rebuke, and the rebuke is not pleasant. It shows, amen, direct, it, 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 it's like, it shows you exactly where you're at on your thermostat, as Pastor Stephanie was referring to on Wednesday night. Check your thermostat. Are you a man hot or are you lukewarm? If you're lukewarm, the Bible said he will spew you from your from his mouth. He will spew you out. What good of you being just lukewarm? lukewarm? He said, I'd rather have you hot or cold. But that in-between worship, that, that in-between satisf satisf uh, satisfaction of just barely a man getting and doing and what, uh, just, uh, uh, no, no, no. He said, I'd rather have you hot or cold. Check your thermostat. It is ringing. Pastor Steph, you might have to preach part two. Hey, man, praise God on today is ringing. Check your thermostat. Haggai calls a man for faithful <coughs> service, faithful service faithful service and as your pastor I'm going to go ahead and take Haggai name out of that, out the title and put your pastor is calling for faithful service your pastor is calling for faithful service, if you're listening to me on today and you're outside of the house of Red Cross Tabernacle, praise, amen pray. this is to you as well your pastor is a man calling for faithful service from you too. Faithful service, not to him, not to them, not to they, but unto him who a man liveth that give life unto God most high. Faithful service unto him. God didn't put you on the earth to come and serve me. He came that, that you may serve a man him. And through serving him, everything else will work out when you get the vertical right God will work out the horizontal when you get this relationship right the God in heaven right it'll make the relationship between man a man with ease it'll, it'll make that relationship a man come without uh, uh with, without hardship okay <clears throat> excuse me and so we see this was a divine call, amen. And when uh, we really get to the purpose of it, uh, uh, we see that in the midst of the divine call that this showed his displeasure with them. Five times we read in this book that the word of the Lord came, the word of the Lord came, the word of the Lord came. And every out of all five times that the word of the Lord came, it was never about your next, your best, your best is yet to come. <laughs> oh, come on, let's go. Come on, God, redeem it a time in your life. That sounds all, oh, it's good. But sometimes I call that gospel emotionalism. Five times the word came back to back here in Haggai. And every time, this was the first time a message had come to people through a prophet since their return from Bab Babylonian captivity. Notice I told you that Haggai and a man and uh, his homeboy, a man, praise God, they were raised up. Let me get over here to it. Zechariah, Haggai and Zechariah, some 16 years later, that the work had begun because God can now entrust them mm -hmm, to speak the word. And won't sugarcoat the word. Time out for pastors, prophets, teachers, apostles, evangelists, whoever to stop sugarcoating the word and giving the word and let the word fall like a mighty hammer, shattering rocks into pieces, shattering the hearts of God, people into pieces. God will put you back together again. But let the hammer fall. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let the hammer fall. God's big enough to put you back together. 
but let the, the weight of the word crush you, convict you, but it, and it, the word of God will save you. See, even in the mission, though, even though it was a divine message that come of the divine rebuke, it was for their good to save their soul. Okay, the word of the Lord came five times here. So, but the people said it wasn't time. It's not time. It's not time. You know, they was using excuses. It's not time. It, 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 is it not amazing that some people attitude and attri uh, uh, attribute their, their lack of action to God's leading when the people said it was not yet the right time to work on the temple? They were in uh, reality using somewhat pious sounding reasoning as an excuse for their unwillingness, as an excuse, underlying this, uh, as an excuse for their unwillingness or laziness concerning the temple. The truth was that they had replaced the priority of God's work with personal preferences regarding their own projects. God's work had taken second place to their own desires. I use the acronym FAT, F period, A period, T. Faithful, available, and teachable. That we should always be fat, amen, in God. Faithful, available, and teachable. Sometime, we're like that fat back from, amen, that pork. You're just fat. You're just lazy. You're just, amen, making excuses. And we're not talking about faithful, available, and teaching, amen, at this point. It's showing that we are unwilling. We are showing un an unwillingness, amen, praise God, to do what God calls us to do. We are lazy. We have become lackadaisical about handling the word of God, lackadaisical in presenting the word of God, lackadaisical in our singing and our worship and our service unto the Lord. Amen. And we think that we have time. Remember what the imp in the story said. I'll just tell them that they got more time. Oh, I won't do it this week. Pastor, understand. House, amen. Pastor Stephanie, understand. Amen. Pray. But do you, have you considered if God understands? Have you ever considered that, amen, has God understood my problem, my situation? Surely he has. But God requires more of you. God requires more of me. And he wants us to be about our father's business. We see Jesus as a youth in the temple preaching. Left his mother and father and said, I'm, I'm about my father's business. What child would speak something in reference to that? Say, I'm about my father's business. And he's in there schooling the educators of religion, a man with divine impartation from God, the father. He was about his father's business at 12 years old. Even though when we look into the New Testament, we don't see a lot of the, 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 we don't see the chapters and the books are not filled with his youth activities. But the one youth activity that they allow us to glean in on is that he left from the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the mother and father's side and he was left a couple of days in the city, in the synagogue teaching to the Pharisees and Sadducees and he said that he was about his father's business so if at 12 years old he was about his father's business uh, that gives me a clear indication at age 12 that would take me up until age 32 and a half the reason why I say age 32 and a half because hey amen if I see him at 12 doing the work of the Lord that that's that's enough for me to believe and, and entrust that the son of God was a man about his father's business, a man, even in his teenage years. He didn't run to the poppy fields. He didn't run a man to the to the uh, uh, um, 
to the fig trees and uh, with all his friends down into the vineyards and steel and all this stuff and had a good time and come back and amen with the slingshot amen with the rope of dope amen hitting people amen praise God and scaring for he ain't have time for foolishness to plan at 12 he was in the temple teaching so that's enough for me to believe until the age of 32, uh, 32, amen, praise God, the year before, amen, ministry, that he was always about his father's business. So when he came at the ripe age of 33, amen, he stepped on the scene. From 12 to 30, amen, to, uh, uh, to, to 33, amen, that was all preparation of him working, amen, and doing for the Lord and being about his father's business and serving and helping. I bet you he was helping in the community, amen, from 12 to 33, amen. At age 33, we just see that he fully stepped on the scene in the weight of the glory of God as the son of God and the son of man to step on the scene and begin to release what God had put on the inside of him. Amen. So we got to ensure that we about our father's business in the good times, the bad times and the indifferent as I always say. Now, I we 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 fully are uh, uh, aware, amen, praise God that yes, life can amen hit you upside the head and amen, praise God that can deter you. Yes, yes, those things happen. It's happening to a lot of folks. It's happening to those at Red Cross Tabernacle of Praise. And that's why the message on the day is to encourage your heart, amen, from the sanctuary on today. The word of the Lord on today, amen, is a great word to encourage us, to remind us, to bring us back into reflection. But what do you do when life keeps, amen, knocking at your door? And yes, you want to serve the Lord and you want to do, but I'm not physically able. Huh? We 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 still we rally together around our brothers and sisters and and we're able to help bring and fulfill the call in their life together because life happens and we understand life happens and things amen go awry. Okay? But as soon as, amen, we get the moment to come back, we come back into the house of worship and we give God praise and say, God, thank you, amen. Because many, to tell you the truth, the, the real time to draw close to God is when all hell is breaking loose in our lives and in our families. This is the time to run into the ark of safety, run into the ark of, of, of refuge, amen, and, and take refuge in the house of the Lord, amen, praise God, where we can be strengthened from our brothers and sisters in Christ, amen, be uh, 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 built up in our faith through the, the word of the Lord. It's not time to, amen, go left, go right, but keep on the path. Keep working it out. Keep holding on. Amen. Praise God. Keep pressing forth. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. Amen. Amen, y'all. I, I see the comments out there. Amen, Sister Brown. God bless you. Yes. We got to keep going forth. Got to keep pushing. We understand. Amen. Praise God. But, do, but, but let it not become an excuse that we make Amen. Praise God. Because some sometimes we 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 make excuses when, Amen. There really is no excuse. Okay. But in the midst of that, we let God work it all out. We allow God to move, and we get right back into our position, our post. I say, Lord, I thank you for keeping me from that one. Ah, uh, but I'm back and I'm better, stronger than ever. Amen. And I'm running, amen, after you. As the deer paineth after the water brook, so shall my soul path after thee. Amen. What is my time? I'm almost, oh man, my, I didn't get through. Hallelujah. This is good. This is good. Let me jump into a couple of questions. I got about two minutes. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. When we begin to look at this, as a matter of fact, I think I can go ahead and really kind of bring this to, to a head. <clears throat> the purpose of this teaching on today was to see clearly how God uses use Haggai to rebuke his people and help them return back to him. 
That was the call of the prophet at this time. 16 years, God raised him and Zechariah up to speak these words, to get the hearts of God's people back so that they may show that God's leading and his timing are correct and appropriate and that there are consequences, <clears throat> there are consequences to failure to obey. Remember what we said, it says, and I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountain and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labors of the hand. If you were to stop and really look into our society right now, this, this let, hear me close on this. Listen, listen to, listen to the um, the economic, uh, uh, the, listen to the economics in this in, in verse eleven, and think of today, and think of today right now. He says, therefore, this is verse ten. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew. And the earth is stayed from her, few, her fruit. The heaven over you is stayed from dew. Dew is the representation of rain. It's a representation of a watering. The dew comes in the morning to wet and amen the earth and to replenish, but also it is a form of a rain. How many of you know that there are lakes, major bodies of water, that are drying up in California, Nevada. Great massive bodies of water that was once a place of destinations of enjoyment are drying up a man by the, 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 the millions of gallons by the year. They're drying up to where the levels are so low that there are water shortages in certain areas. And the earth is stayed from her fruit we import more vegetation, veg vegetables, amen, out of, of other countries than we, amen, collect and gather here in America. And then it says, and I call for a drought upon the land. It's been hotter these past, this, this past spring and summer than it has been in a long time. Been hitting indexes of 106, 107, 103. It's been, it's been a hot one. And then just not here in North Carolina, but all throughout the plains, central plains. He said, I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil. The oil referring to back in this day was that of the olive oil. What is the oil of our day? The oil is what a man petroleum and upon that which the ground bringeth forth. And upon men, there's, we've been in a famine. We've been in a, uh, uh, in a shutdown, amen, praise God, the past two years. Millions have died due to COVID-19. There have been massive uh, cattle uh, that have died, amen, in, in the Central Plains as well. Meat prices are up, bacon is up. A bag of chicken wings are about $25. And upon the labor of the hands. When we look at all of this, <clears throat> excuse me. When we look at all of this and we hear this, and this was in the Old Testament, we must learn from it. We must adhere to what God is saying. God calls us to faithful service. And he wants us to work while it is day for when no man can work. Uh, for when nightfall, they meant no man can work. So, amen. The chastening, he says, we in verse nine. Let me see. I want to actually get over here to. It says here in the text. It says God then added that what little increase they did realize, He blew it away. In other words, what little increase that did come into the house because of their laziness and their, their unwillingness to make sure the house of God was taken care of, what little did they did receive, he blew it away. He caused the, uh, the refrigerator to break down. He caused the brake shoes to go bad. It, it, it's like he, w w when you think you got there, something knocks at your door. 
Sometimes we always blame the enemy. I'm going to say this and I'm be quiet. I'm really out. Sometimes we blame the en enemy for our uh, displeasures in God. And we say, oh, the enemy's just busy. The enemy's just busy. I don't know where this came from. You know, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> Sometimes it's God just saying. And then he say, he'll whisper to you, come back home. In the same breath. Come home. And he's causing the discomfort. He's causing the chastisement. So that we can realign ourselves and get back in position, get our, get our heart back right with him, be about our father's business, get right church, and let's go home. Oh man, this has been a great lesson. And I pray that you we have overcome our fears uh, to share the will of God with others and avoid procrastination in our obedience to him, our procrastination in obedience unto him. I hope that you have been uh, blessed by this teaching. I hope, amen, praise God, that uh, it didn't go in one ear and out the other. Amen. I pray that it is, amen, just, amen, it hit rock solid upon your heart and sunk in. Amen. Praise God. It is important, amen, not only to start God's work, but also to finish God's work. And he's, that's what he was calling them back to do, finish the work of building the temple. You see, and again, on the practical point, man's excuses may fall. Others may never, uh, but others may never. Our action rather than our words are the best indicator of our priorities. Verse number, uh, uh, number four says, the wise man regularly examines his actions, priorities, and loyalties. And I'm trying to be wise on today that we uh, examine our hearts on today, examine our actions, examine our priorities and our loyalty so that we may, amen, get right church and let's go home. That we may repent. True repentance requires full obedience. And the last practical point on today, I'm going to leave with you and we're going to be gone. God's people should expect God's discipline when they disobey. We should expect God's discipline when we obey. There's no child out there who have done wrong that have never gone. Well, not in our household. They have gone unpunished or undisciplined for their action. God, amen, is a heavenly father. And he's a good, good father. And he does the same. Discipline. Discipline, discipline the disciples is always adequate. <clears throat> it's always right. And sometimes Lord needs to dis discipline me, chastise me, so that we're, I'd rather be right. I'd rather get chastised down here. Yeah. Then get up there and find out that I've been rebuked by the, 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 the son of God himself. I'd rather get it right down here because yes, we follow the disposition of grace and mercy. Okay. Amen. I, I thank God for all of you. It's 52 after the hour. Uh, praise God. We're getting ready to amen, wrap up into the sanctuary. This is our communion Sunday. Amen. Praise God. Come into the sanctuary with expect expectations. Amen. To hear the word of the Lord, to worship in the beauty of holiness. Come, amen, with your hearts already stirred. Come with your minds already made up that you're going to belch from your belly, amen, a hallelujah like never before. Come, amen, expecting a mighty move from God and, and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. So come, come, come ready for what God has for you on today. You all be blessed, amen. We'll see you shortly here in the sanctuary. Amen. And we're looking forward to worshiping with my, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We love you with the love of God. God bless you.